Welcome to Custom Home Builder Solutions, also known as CHS, a job costing full accounting and profit management software designed specifically for the professional home builder. This video should be the last in a series of videos about setting up payers or customers or people that pay us. I'm going to click this section right here and again open the payers and buyers list and set up. And we've talked about setting up new payers and payers are people that we receive money from whether it's a bank or a customer or a tenant or an employee or an investor or whoever we set those up as what we call payers. We've discussed how to add new payers. We've discussed how to look at where payers have been used in the database and we've discussed about um, changing the payer ID and code and about whether how you how you would delete or edit something. Now I'm going to talk about this window and a little bit about how to search, how to print some labels, um, how, and how to print lists of payors, etc. So this shouldn't be too long of a video. So we will talk about those things. First of all on this screen, and we're also going to talk about how to upload and attach some things to various payers um, like uploaded contracts. We'll talk about it. We'll play like we're uploading a contract in this video and attach it. Um, but first of all on this screen, as I mentioned before when we've been looking at it, you can see where we have um, if you click on something, you can see the various related information. This is a home buyer, so we have George Small. And if you click on it, you can see the telephone numbers, etc. And if you suddenly wanted to do an email, if you have a default email client set up, um, my browser just asked me if I wanted to confirm that I wanted to go like sort of elsewhere. I don't really have my um, Outlook set up, but you can see how it tried to go there and it supplied that email address. Um, so that's all that's about is that you could click that active hyperlink if you're wanting to try to do it. And when we set up pairs, we showed how you could type notes. Um, and if you, you know, want to sort of expand that, you can grab hold of the corner and look at more notes. Um, I believe we set up a payer for a uh, renter that we typed as renter. And you can see in our note it says Renter 801 North Gibson. So any um, sort of basic information that you have, if you just want to real quickly, there's even a Google map that will go show where that address is on a Google map if you like to, if you just want to look at that or spy on somebody's house on <laughs> Google Earth, who knows. Anyway, um, so that's that about the vendors list. Let's talk a little bit about what you can use to find various vendors up here. First of all, you'll notice little A going on here. This stands for active and I stands for inactive. Um, you can edit a, a payor and set them to inactive if you're not wanting them to show up for selection in certain things or just because um, you're just wanting to always just look at active ones in your list. So if I click active, you'll see that I just see all the ones with A's here. If I click inactive, I'll just see that one inactive. But you might click active because maybe, and here's one of my first things, you want to do a report of what you searched for and you just need uh, an email phone list of all your actives. So there's an email phone list of just the active. You can see how down here in the filters, one of the filters is payor status equals A. You can see that kind of filter at the bottom that says up here, see filters at end of report. Um, that's one report you can get of all your actives. Let's just go over the other reports real quick um, because there's not that much to it and you can figure it out. This one's called, um, this one has um, email phone list with notes. So any of those notes that we were seeing where this says renter, um, we had some notes on George and Mary Small, you know, that kind of thing. You can see emails and stuff with notes. Um, the other report is the payer spreadsheets list. And with that you'll get their street address. It does spread into um, sort of legal size, I mean landscape. So if you export to PDF, which is the best way. These open initially as HTML web reports because we have the option when they open as a web report to be able to send the data to Excel, which you could do if you're needing this uh, list of your payors. 
um, in Excel, but also the option to send it to PDF. And you can see that when you do um, your printer icon on this one, that you should set this to landscape. See how it's showing you that it's going to cut it off right here. So this is my printer's stuff. Um, the other thing is that um, I need to so page setup. On my, uh, this is a different printer than I'm used to doing, but if I did landscape, I mean legal, not landscape, then I come back here and I can see my little preview looks okay for printing. I'm not going to print that right now, but that's just some little tips right there. Um, so there you go. That's the various reports you can get based on your search. Um, if, for example, I wanted to just see all the S's, and I did a little report of an email phone list of just the S's. You can see how that's, that's doing just that. So your search type things. Now if I clear my search, show all, I can also do a field search. And you can click this button, help for searching, and also look at the tips down here that for ranges, you can click on one hold down your left mouse key and start scrolling, you know, if you just want to adjust those. And I did a search, then I would just see those I had scrolled through. If I did a field search, I can clear my search. And maybe I just want to um, do that pair and that pair and that pair. I'm holding down my control key and then clicking on them. And so if I do a search, you'll see that. Let's clear this search. And then you could also do a search for just, let's say we just want to see just ones that are our home buyer customers. We might have home buyer or customer set up as the payer type, like I showed in a video about how you can set up types and attach them to the payers. But I could just look for home buyers and then say, um, the other thing that's up here is labels. And let's just say I'm going to send some. Uh, generic thing out to all my home buyers. I could do labels up here and I could do mail labels sorted by name and you can see how up here it's telling you that these will fit lab labels Avery 5163 important instructions. First click the download icon to download this PDF to your own computer and use your own PDF reader that's because you need to make sure you get it um, fit exactly to fit on labels. So here's a little download icon. I can do that and I can click open with Adobe Acrobat on mine. Um, what pops up there when you download will be depending on things you set in your browser. You could look at our user connection guide for some, some things that you should set to make that a little bit better for getting into your own reader, whatever kind. I happen to have Adobe Acrobat Pro. And the main thing we're emphasizing about labels or anything on forms is that if you click your printer, you do not want it to size to fit. Notice this over here. Um, fit means it's just going to try to make it pretty. And notice how it moved it a little bit. And you need to leave it actual size so that it fits um, how we programmed it to actually fit on those kinds of labels. You don't want any sort of auto shrinking, auto this and that. Your printer may have different properties. You should look at properties and advanced page setup and all the things to make sure that you are keeping it actual size and that it's not doing any sort of auto shrink to fit, anything like that. Um, so that's what, one reason I wanted to mention that. I'm not going to print these, but you can get a clue um, from stopping and reading this information about which kind of labels you might want to use. Other labels, um, there's one with no return address and you could just, if you're making file folders, these name labels could be handy. But notice how those labels are just for ones that I searched for, which was my customers. Also over here you'll see a little labels link and it'll, it'll help you print a whole sheet of labels. Maybe you plan to do um, a whole lot of mail outs and just keep a sheet of labels in a folder to stick on them to some particular payer or maybe it's like renters and so you have a sheet of labels for mailing um, to your various renters. Again you would want to download. It tells you what kind of Avery and make sure they fit before you print your sheet of labels for one 
That's why the labels word is over here for one person. So let's um, go back to the field search for just one more minute. Let's clear our search out. And then let's go back to it again. And notice over here I could just have also used A for active and I for inactive, but it's faster to use these buttons here. And right here I, it says name. I can type partial. Um, notice that we have the word custom in a couple of couple of our pairs, so I'll just use that as an example. And I'll do a search. And by partial it means in the name it'll find everything that has that particular thing in it. So this one had custom in both of those. So let's show all again. I think that's all I really needed to say about search. And if I did labels or reports it would just be for these two now. Because they're, they're based on your search results. So I'll show all. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is how you can upload and attach things to one of your customers. Um, let's use our Georgia Mary small example temp template job we've been using. There's a little icon here. If I click it, I will see all documents that have been uploaded for this that have small George as the contact, um, as the contact I just clicked on. So what we see is two or three draw requests. You can review those documents by using this um, preview thing. But we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, upload a file or folder, file or photo. And this opens gives you some information about what kinds of files can be uploaded. If I click this upload icon, I can then scroll my computer. Um, I know where something is. I, I'll try to use. Play like you have a contract from them. We're, we're just pretending. So let's play like we have a contract that is actually filled out. Um, that, that one really is not, but let's say we filled it out and it was for small. So then that caused it to upload. It said a copy has been uploaded to CHS and the tag window is going to open. So you can title this anything you want. Um, I might call this sales contract like that. I could um, do a file type. Uh, I don't know if I have any contract. Let's call it contract. You can set up more file types with this little thing here. This helps you search your file cabinet for those types of types. Maybe you don't want everybody to see this contract, so you just make it a level three or higher um, for whatever reason. And you might go ahead and attach this to our job that we have, which was our, we know which job that they're, they're attached to, so I'm attaching it to a job. I'm not going to attach it to a cost code. It's already, um, and we can just change the memo, you know, that this is sales contract for George and Mary Small. This is just a little bit of tagging and information about the file. So I'll save that and I could check that I uploaded the right thing by clicking this open file. Now this is a blank contract I uploaded <laughs> because I don't really have one filled out for them but um, I just wanted to show you the example. Hope, hopefully you'd have a filled in one that you uploaded. So if I close this and close this then you'll see that there's another document attached to this payor. So every time I open this, I can look for, I can also search for just uh, the type of contract for this payor or something. Remember, I put a doc type of contract on it. So you can see how you can attach uploaded files. You probably would also attach that, which I just did actually, to the job by selecting a job code especially a sales contract so that you could see it there. I think that's all I wanted to say about the payors list and the various things you can do on it, the reports and the labels that you can print and so on. So thank you for watching.